And now, Kirby Anderson. Second hour today, we have in studio with us Pastor Todd Wagner, and he is the senior pastor at Watermark Community Church. And we have quoted him on a number of occasions. And if you are maybe wondering if the church is irrelevant or whether it's uh, maybe dying or whether or not there is a need for us maybe to think about what the church is, I think this is going to be a really helpful conversation today. Watermark Community Church is one that has certainly been one we mentioned from time to time. Even last week when we had uh, Eric Metaxas in here, we are talking about he was going to be speaking at your church. We've had uh, Todd on, of course, talking about Breakpoint. We've had John Stone Street and all sorts of other individuals. Uh, we've talked about some of the apologetics conferences that are available at his church and just the whole area of ministry. So when mm. I found out we could have you in studio, <laughs> talk about this book, Come and See, Everything You Wanted in the One Place You Would Never Look. It is just a delight to have you in studio today. It is good to be here. And folks maybe don't know that you and I have been friends for a long time. I've both learned from you and admired you and been grateful for your ministry. And so it is good to be with you live. Here we go. It is so exciting. And again, we have some links here. We have a link to the book. And again, you probably can find it in your local bookstore. David C. Cook, about 300 pages. We also have some links. One, wordsfromwags.com. <laughs> I think people would enjoy that. Lessons from a Christ follower on life and leadership. Hmm. And of course, also uh, connections to Watermark Community Church and the rest. And so this, I think, gets us into the book itself. And I know a while back you wanted to write a book entitled <laughs> The Book You Should Not Read. I, I don't think the marketing people in the <laughs> publishing house thought that was such a good idea. Yeah, Why is that? That's in the author's note in the beginning. It was funny because, you know, I, I never thought I would write. I talk about this and yes. much less I never thought I'd write a book about the church. I'll tell you why we did in a moment. But when I first started, they, there's some publishers that came to me and said, Todd, we, we would like you to write. And mm -hmm. I, I just go, well, hey, I, I've spoken a lot of different things grab what you want and let's work together to make a book. And they go, no, we want to know what you actually want to write about. And that's why I said, well, what I really want to do, I mean, I don't, I, the one book that I want everybody to read has already been written. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and so sure. I'll write a book called The Book You Shouldn't Read to make people hopefully want to read their Bible. And they were not really fond of that title of that idea. <laughs> but you did end up writing this. So talk about that for just a minute, because you've run into people over the years that say, you know, tell us, Todd, how I would start a church. And you'll ask them some questions. And you talk about this in the book, which I love. <laughs> I could just see you doing this and saying, well, wait a minute, you don't really need to start a church. <laughs> You already have a church. You already are the church. Yeah. Talk about that. We have such a misconception, don't we? Boy, we do. When you when you ask people uh, what the church is, they almost always respond the same way. If they don't start with words that are going to be maybe offensive to a lot of people, boring, irrelevant, out of touch, judgmental, they'll say things like an address, a denomination, uh, yeah. sadly sometimes a personality, but uh, very rarely will they describe a life-giving uh, community of people mm -hmm. that's a source of blessing and and power and 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 it's funny I even qualify that word when I say it because I don't know what people think of when they think of power but the goodness of God manifest on earth they don't mm -hmm. think of that right and they should so um, yeah I, I tell folks all the time listen when I talk to some guys that were abiding with Christ studying His Word uh, sharing life and being accountable to one another and they go hey we want to start a church I go it sounds like you are yeah. It, it, if what you're talking about is you want to start gathering weekly on Sunday mornings, make sure you never call that church. Yeah. That's one aspect of what the church does. Mm -hmm. In fact, you know, it's so funny. We're about to start something at Watermark because God in his kindness has brought us amazing um, musicians, you know, uh, and, and gentlemen that just are a blessing. You know, John Abel and Shane and Shane and others that are with us. And, sure. and so we're going to do a night of worship, and I won't let them call it that because— we battle all the time for even what worship is. And I said, if you're going to call it that, it's got to look really different. It's got to have a small W next to all these cap O-R-S-H-I-P. And they're looking at me like, you're crazy. It's an, it's called a night of worship. I go, no, you're crazy if you think what we do when we gather for an hour is worship. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I, I, I've had a lot of fun just trying to encourage people because I needed, Kirby, it was my problem. I was the one who had a bad idea of the church because I didn't see a living, healthy, breathing model. Well, and again, if we go to the first uh, century in the book of Acts, we have, have people holding it all in common and ministering mm -hmm. to one another, having all their meals together. That's not exactly what church looks like today in the 21st century, is it? No, it's not. And I, 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 I'll i say this, too. You know, if I was going to write a book, and, and I did now, I never would have thought it would be on the church. Because, again, I had a bad view of it. And, in fact, the first two chapters of this book, I, I, yeah. I wrote the first two chapters so people could give it to folks who don't not only have a good idea, idea of church, but they don't even have a good idea who God is. Mm -hmm. And so really the first two chapters are for uh, Phillips to give to um, non-evangelized, non-Christ-following friends right. and just say, listen, if there was a God that was out there that was like this, 
wouldn't you want to know him? And then really the rest of the chapters are, if you know that God, this is what we ought to look like on earth. But I was telling somebody, I think it was actually this morning, if you were alive in the first century and you were going to write about something and not a secondary issue, if you didn't write about God on earth, I mean, if you didn't write about Jesus, you wrote about some peripheral issue. If it's true that Jesus is God and he loves us and he's here, then you better mention it like Secundus eventually did, like Josephus did, Mm -hmm. and like others made note of. Everything else is a secondary issue. And I thought to myself, after I did it, frankly, you know what? I didn't write on some boring topic. If God is manifest in his church and you don't write about that, then you're writing about some periphery issue. The problem is most folks don't see God at work in the church. Yes. Well, again, 20 chapters, the first couple, trust me, sweet lies, some of that, not a chance, but uh, Mm -hmm. first church of ever and some of those (laughs) we're going to get into. And I also want to have you take us through a little bit later what you have, uh, kind of a nice diagram Mm -hmm. that we can even put on our screen here if people like to see it, of how you take people from kind of minus zero Mm -hmm. all the way, all the way through the kind of discipleship. But um, um, I guess systematic theology 101, we talk about ecclesiology. What do we mean by that? Ecclesia, where does that idea come from? Yeah. Yeah, well, I think it comes from just this this group of people that God has called out of darkness into his marvelous light, Yes. okay, that we might proclaim his excellencies, not that we would gather and go through some ritual or order of worship, but people who would worship. The reason I say, if we do a night of worship, we're not going to call it a night of worship, <laughs> is because we, we have dumbed worship down to this thing we do for an hour, and often not in a very inspiring way. Mm-hmm. Uh, worship is what we do with our entire lives, and... Uh, and, and so what, what I in, encourage folks is, listen, you as a called out individual, called out of darkness, out of a way that seemed right to man, but in the end is the way of death, who have now come to understand that there's a God who no good thing does he withhold from those who love him. You get yeah. to walk in that. And so that, that really is what um, we talk a lot about. When we think about what the church is, it's a group of people who love God and love one another and get after it for the good of man. Yes. Well, and again, when we talk about church, we have to not think building. And so what you're trying to do is create that. And again, chapter five, I love that. You don't start a church, you know, and it's a deal you don't want to make. Uh, So what would you say to individuals right now that are saying, okay, I thought the church was the Methodist church or the Presbyterian church. Uh, How do we begin to think through that biblically in terms of this idea of ecclesia and all the rest? Yeah. So I, I think, listen, I mean, church rightly defined is not only not something to not be ashamed of, it's something to be run to run toward and embraced. And so when when if you think of church as a denomination or as a building, okay, we, we just need to expand our understanding. And um, you know, in, in fact, Kirby, one of the things I do all the time, we we, uh, we both live in Dallas and that's where we're broadcasting this from. But sometimes because now, after uh, seven years, we eventually had a place that we could gather and meet right. in. Mm-hmm. And and we built something that was welcoming and attractive, and uh, we felt like glorifying even in its architecture. We, we didn't build a church, right? I, my, I, in fact, I told the architects, you guys keep bringing me something that Aunt B and Opie are going to walk into. Okay, I, I don't build me what you think of as a church. I'm building the church. Build me a place the church can gather. And then uh, when we come back, I'll explain what I did with that next. Well, and a good, great introduction. Todd Wagner with us. We'll continue right after this. You're listening to Point of View, your listener-supported source for truth. Back once again, Todd Wagner in studio with us as we talk about his book, Come and See. And you were just explaining a minute ago, and I've seen the architecture. Matter of fact, people that can click in there and go to Watermark Mm -hmm. and see what you have there. But it doesn't look like your typical church. And I'll be honest, I have met people at your church where they were with businesses and they'll say, Hey, you want to meet a watermark? Sure. I, you know, yeah. I, and no, most people are not going to a church to meet somebody for a business deal, but you've had all sorts of people that have actually joined your church because they first came there because of business or they came there yeah. because they heard you had one of the best coffee shops or something, right? <laughs> it, it, that's right. We didn't, we didn't build a coffee shop for, for the people who attend together and, and encourage each other to go to we built a place that we could interact with the community. Yeah. Um, when and you know, it's, it's, Kirby, I know you well, and, and I know you know exactly. We've been talking about already the ecclesiology of the church, but church has become a noun for a building, and we right. say it a lot. And so, like when people go to your church, and um, it's funny when people walk up, and, and and if they do go to Watermark, just I mean, they can go to Google Images and, and Google Image Watermark, and it, it's an amazingly beautiful building. Yes, it is. Which was intentional when we yeah. I, when I finally got those guys out of designing me something Aunt B wanted, and I just said I actually took them to a couple of websites and showed them REIs, 
Okay. And I yes, just, yes. And, and I said, and I just said, look, this is the kind of structure that we want. I want a place that few people can feel welcome. I mean, it's a really interesting process how we designed that building. We actually used a process that Disney uses mm. in designing uh, real estate properties they have, where we gave them a list of nouns, a list of adjectives, and a list of verbs that described what the building would emote. Mm-hmm. And then we tore out pictures from a magazine to illustrate what we thought those words and adjectives and verbs meant. And then we said to those architect, those designers, okay, now communicate back to us what you think. And boy, they, they did an amazing job, our folks, at, our friends at OmniPlan. But I, I will tell you that when people say to me, man, you've got a beautiful church, I always do the same thing. I say, well, who'd you meet? <laughs> and they go, and they look at me kind of cross-eyed. They go, what are you talking about? <laughs> and they go, we're talking about your building. I go, oh, I thought you said the church, Yeah. Mm-hmm. right? Because the church is a people. Yeah. And, and I will tell you, I'm pretty confident that if they met somebody who's truly a member of the body of Christ, they would go, man, that is a beautiful person. It's somebody they would want to know more of and spend more time with. Well, and that's why you've written the book, because yeah. you want people to begin to change their categories a little bit. But uh, talk about uh, what you require of somebody in the church, because indeed in that church building, you have those church members. And uh, you don't really want people to come and sit and soak, do you? <laughs> no, no. In fact, you you made mention of it earlier in one of the chapters Let's where I talk it. about the deal yeah. that too many pastors I think, cut with their people. Mm-hmm. Um, I think one of the problems that's going on in our country today, and I know you talk about it faithfully every single day as we see the deterioration in our society. If there's a problem in our society, it's a, it's a church problem. I spoke recently at a, at a breakfast um, where the topic they asked me to speak on was the greatest evil in America today. Mm-hmm. And I said, this is a really encouraging topic for Christians because uh, – when somebody else is the problem, you got to figure out how to affect change in them and how to move where they're at. I go, this, what I'm about to tell you may shock you. I don't think it's the, uh, the, the LGBTQ community. I don't think it's the pro uh, abortion mindset. I don't think it's a liberal progressive ideology. I think the greatest evil in America today is the dead, ineffective or feckless church. And the reason that's good news is because those of us that are part of it can change that. Yes. It's, it's just, fairly quickly. Yeah, we can draw a circle around ourselves, change everything in it, invite other people in there. But 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 I think too many pastors, Kirby, are are cutting a deal. I, I write about this, are cutting yes. a deal with members mm-hmm. of their body where they basically say, hey, you come here, you validate me with your presence. Right. You, you give me enough money to keep the lights on, and I won't ask too much of you, and we'll both tell each other we're doing what God wants us to do. And that does not produce the kind of people that changed the world. And um, and so uh, too many times we're trying to figure out what to do to get them back. So what do we ask of people? It's interesting. Um, there's a pretty high bar for membership, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Calvin's the one that said, we're saved by grace through faith alone, but the grace which saves is never alone. And, and so we're not talking about whether or not an individual is uh, rightly related to God. That's that's a, a mysterious thing that only he knows, right? He'll he'll send at the harvest time. He'll decide, you know, where the chaff is and where the wheat is. But um, he says, hey, here's what you should call people to, and and so a lot of times what we we try and encourage folks is is look, this is what it means to be a member, and it's a pretty high bar. And some folks said, Todd, if you start a church in Dallas, Texas, where there's a church every. 300 yards yeah. that requires that of people, no one's going to come. And my response was, well, that's fine, man. Let their blood be in somebody else's hands. Yes. But I'm going to give an account for their souls. And so I want to teach them the whole counsel of God. I want to call them to the adventure of life in Christ. And I know that God will never say to me, Todd, man, you did an amazing job. You know how many people listen to you every week? I'll never hear those words. <laughs> right. But what he'll say to me is, hey, well done. You, you called them in grace to follow me and to know me and to be the people of God. And, uh, and and to be, as it says, shining stars in the midst of a bright and perverse generation. Well, you know, one of the things you talk about is getting on board, and that is the mm-hmm. difference between people that are drafted into a war, mm-hmm. not to minimize those who were drafted that fought in World War II or the Vietnam mm-hmm. War or whatever, but those who are drawn into the battle. You think of those individuals today that said, you know, I'm going to sign up and I'm going to Iraq, I'm going to Afghanistan. And there is a sense of community, but there's also a sense of obligation. And dare I use this old-fashioned word, duty. <laughs> and isn't that something that you're trying to instill in the church as well? Yeah, I mean, the, the privilege I mean, of, of being used of God. I, I, one of the things I tell folks all the time is that, listen, you got to stop paying people to give them the privilege of ripping you off uh, of of uh, living faithfully for Christ and doing ministry. Yeah. Our, our staff, I tell them, listen, if you're here and you want to be the guy that always does stuff so folks can 
just sit around and clap for you. You're you're on the wrong staff. Yeah. Our job is to equip the saints. That's right. To Help set them, to them up. Do the work of ministry. Yes. And so early on, people came to me and they go, Todd, I can't tell who's on your staff and who's not. <laughs> Because everybody here is thrown in. Yeah. Well, that sounds a That's lot good. like First Peter four ten to me. Sure right? does. Right. As each one of you has received a gift, employ it. Yes. Okay. That means do with it what you're supposed to do. All right. As as faithful servants of the manifold grace of God. And so we're just listen. I'm trying to create opportunities for people to be used in a way that will bring bring them great joy, and will and will uh, find them useful and fruitful. And where they're going to go, hey, my life isn't meaningless. My life isn't without purpose. And when you watch God use gifts, we haven't started a single ministry at Watermark Kirby that wasn't started by a member. Right. And so when folks mm-hmm. come up and say to me, Ted, why doesn't the church? I go, well, uh, I know what I'm doing as a part of God's church. What are you doing? Mm-hmm. Because if they come up and show up and say, hey, why don't you provide me a young adult ministry? Why don't you provide me a ministry for 40-year-old singles? Why don't you do that? I'm like, because I guess God hasn't raised up a godly, gifted, passionate leader. The church is a people. Mm -hmm. It's not a place you go to get serviced. Yes. It's a place you go to serve and to be equipped for service. And so, um, yeah, we call them to that. We, in fact, we use a metaphor that uh, we've used for a long time, a battleship cruise ship metaphor. Battleship cruise ship, yeah. Because a lot of, a lot of people, this is the way they choose the church. Yeah. Right. Do I, do I like the captain? You know, do I like the food they serve? Is the music generally pleasant in the ballroom? Then I might sail with you again. Okay, we think a better metaphor is is Battleship. is the captain yeah. himself under authority. Is every crew member developed and deployed in a way mm-hmm. that makes them useful? Is there a mission that's worth uh, participating in? And if so, let's go. But you're not here to ride along, all right? Yeah. You're here to you're here to enjoy um, the privilege of being valued and unleashed. Let's say if we come, when we come back from the break, let's talk about how you want to really keep people accountable. Because mm-hmm. we've had Tommy Nelson here, who you know only so well, and he's yeah. talked about, you know, you just can't come and sit and soak. You're, you know, you're going to get involved <laughs> and you're going to go through the discipleship program. Yeah. And when you're done, then you're going to go out and find someone else and you're going to disciple them as yep. well. And I know you have this kind of, if you will, a whole range of opportunities. And so yeah. maybe when we come back from the break, let's if we can talk about, okay, I'm a new Christian. I just showed up at the church. What do you take me through so that Mm. I am one of those equipped saints to really make the difference? Fantastic. So we'll do that. If you would like to uh, know a little bit more about uh, Pastor Todd Wagner, we've got a couple of great resources for you here today. Of course, we have a link to Watermark Community Church. We have the words from WAGS. And let me uh, a little bit later talk (laughs) about that because... He is willing to take on all sorts of issues and answer all sorts of questions. And it can range from, you know, the floods that we've had in Florida and in Houston. It can be gun control. It can be the military. It can be uh, how we relate to uh, non-Christian individuals and all sorts of stuff. Yeah. And so we have that on the website as well. That's real truth and, real quick is what we put it under. That's the best way to find it. Yeah. And it's really easy to find. So we've got that on the website. And this book, 300 pages, mm. it's published by David C. Cook. You can probably find it in your bookstore, but we've also made it very easy for you to order as well. And as you click on that, you can, of course, get it in hardcover, which I have here <laughs> also in Kindle and even audiobook, I understand. So there are just yeah. some great resources that we've put there for you as well. And a little bit later, as we again are talking about being the church, mm-hmm. we certainly want to encourage you, if you'd like to make a phone call or two, you can ask a question or oh, just sit back fun. and take some notes. one 800 Three five one one two one two. It's all available at our website, pointofview.net. And of course, you can find out more about Todd Wagner by clicking on that button as well. It'll take you to Watermark Church. <laughs> we also have a link to his Facebook page and his Twitter account. So you can oh, follow man. him. We're drowning him in Wagner stuff. We got lots of <laughs> Wagner material, and we're only half done. So we'll come back with Todd Wagner right after this. The opinions expressed on Point of View do not necessarily reflect the views of the management or staff of this station. And now, here again, is Kirby Anderson. Privileged to have in the studio with us today, Pastor Tom Wagner. Again, he is with Watermark Community Church, author of the book, Come and See. It is published by David C. Cook. And just before we go on, let's talk about what is at Watermark, because so often I mention your church. I sometimes quote you as well because I watch some of the mm-hmm. videos that you produce and all the rest. But you've had this philosophy, and I've seen it worked out, that uh, when you do an apologetics conference in Dallas, we're always saying, well, go to Watermark mm-hmm. because you're having it there. Eric Metaxas was here talking about Martin Luther. He was there with yeah. you ni- last night. So you really see this as a venue to really teach people and to bring other individuals into town 
to really educate the body of Christ. Yeah, I, I, you know, by the kindness of God, I've got friends that are uh, experts in areas that uh, I'm familiar with, but maybe not uh, the best to speak on it. And so whether it's Ravi Zacharias or whether it was Greg Kokel out there with Stand to Reason or, uh, you know, someone like you, Kirby, that can come in and just encourage people and just say, hey, here, here's a way to think about this particular topic. So we do training days. Um, you know, by and large, we really work hard just to raise up people in our body that can do that. But every now and then we try and serve the larger church and invite other people in. We did that one apologetics conference you're talking about. But uh, like, you know, this next April, we're doing one for church leaders. And that name is, you know, people think staff. I didn't say church staff, church leaders, leaders. where communities of friends can come and spend three days with us. And our whole goal is not to teach them anything about what we're doing, but to remind them, to give them a picture of what God wants for them to be in their local community. So, boy, I mean, check that out. It's just called churchleaderscompference.com. And we would love to have communities of friends who can come together and be inspired to go, we're going to go create this in our town. Well, again, sometimes we also point people to, mm. for example, you did this great interview with Steve Meyer on intelligent mm. design. Oh, Before yeah. we had Johnny Erickson Todd in studio, yeah. I watched the interview you did with her. Mm. So I already was kind of set up for some of that. So we yeah. do have some of those links. So if uh, wow. Todd Wagner sounds familiar, it's because we sometimes Sometimes linked to some of the <laughs> interviews you've done. But let's get back to what you take people through. There's some pastors right now saying, okay, smart guy, you've been thinking about the church for a while. <laughs> Tell us about the four B's and yeah. what that means. How do you take somebody who's maybe a new Christian and get them from a point where they need to learn some doctrine and they need mm-hmm. to be discipled to a point where they're equipped so that they can go out and disciple others? So way too, commun- may, way too many communities of faith um, are... are trending to or tracking towards the thing that their individual pastor is most passionate about. And so when you think about the four spectrums of things that the church usually does, when when they're either reaching lost people or they're a very service-oriented community or they love to teach God's Word uh, or they're really a small group-focused church, you know, um, everybody's got natural bents that there's certain areas that we're most drawn to. Right. Okay? But this isn't my church. Yeah. You know, I tell people this all the time when folks say to me, Todd, I go to your church. I go, no, you don't. <laughs> okay. I did not die for the sins of the world. You do not go to my church. Yeah. I'm glad to be serving Christ here with you. And, and I know what you mean, but I always take advantage of that. Just like when they say your church is beautiful to teach them and remind them that the church isn't a building. It's a people that well this said. isn't my church. And so, but um, because it's not my church, we're not going to gravitate to the areas that Todd is especially passionate about. And so when I ask people, which of these four things do you think Jesus cares the most about? Mm -hmm. Lost people, uh, folks practicing the one another's of Scripture, um, uh, being useful in in the world and using their gifts and caring for the least of these, or teaching sound doctrine, okay? Uh, You could maybe make a case, Kirby, that uh, if anything, you you know, Jesus said, I came to seek and save the lost, Luke 19.10. But, and that, by the way, is the very first place that church's heart Grow, church's hearts grow cold. Yes, that is very true. You would think if there's four things, you put 25% of your leadership influence in each one of them, that they'd all kind of maintain. Yeah. I, I have found again and again, you've got to spend, I don't know, 50 to 60% of your time reminding people. About evangelism. About, yes, yeah, loving lost people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and, well uh, said. and so you can't study God's word effectively if you're not, you mentioned Howard Hendricks to me when we were off the air. Dr. Hendricks used to always say, people who read their Bible and don't apply it are committing spiritual abortion. Yes, pretty graphic language mm-hmm. and uh and i'm i'm glad it grabs us yeah because if you read god's word you ought to start to love as he loved do as he did and and care as he cared and he came to seek and save the lost so we ought to partly be here to do the same but we but i try to grab a way to memorably say that yes. okay uh and so it just kind of rolled off my tongue one day that we just talked about these are the four areas we're going to care we want people to believe belong be trained be strong believe in christ and then belong to his body mm-hmm. and then be trained in truth so they might be strong in a life of ministry and worship. It's not completely linear. Those things keep happening. Right. Okay? Because certainly once you're strong in a life of ministry and worship, you go back and help others believe in Christ. You're always belonging, and you're always being trained, always growing. Okay? I mean, you and I are learning every single day. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but we ought to. You know, we help folks uh, discover and develop and then deploy their gifts. That's that strong in a life of ministry and worship. And that's what we tell people. Your job is not to come here. Your job is to be God's man or woman here. So what are your gifts? Let's put them to work. 
for the glory of God. And uh, it's a blast when you watch people get unleashed for the kingdom. Now, a lot of this goes along a spiritual continuum, because again, if you look at your chapter, and I'm looking at that yeah. right now, zero members, which I love that idea as well. You have people that are far from God. They're at kind of minus five. You know, sometimes when I've done, done evangelism, even on the college campus, we used to do that. I thought if I could sometimes just warm people up to zero, that's a mm. spiritual gain. Yep. But then you're taking people from zero to 10, a fully devoted follower. Yeah. And it seems to me that you have to have some kind of process to do that. What does that look like at Watermark? Yeah, well, well, first of all, and this is what's so great about language, okay? Even that term, fully devoted follower of Christ, I think too many times people think a fully devoted follower of Christ can name all 66 books of the Bible. Yeah. A fully devoted follower of Christ is going to do better on, on Bible Jeopardy than the other guy. No, a fully devoted follower of Christ is going to not be deluded, but be a doer of the word. Right. And it's going to be somebody who's going to be passionate to say, hey, before I do anything, I want to make sure it's not my will, but his will being done. And so I tell people the moment you trust Christ that, that you can be a spiritual leader because you can be the guy that says, hey, I'm not really sure what we should do, but until somebody tells me from God's word, uh, informed by his spirit and illuminated there, that this is what we should do, I'm not doing anything. And, and so that's what spiritual devotion is. Mm-hmm. Okay, now we ought to grow in spiritual maturity and learning. And so we do help people. One of the things we say right away is, listen, let's get you connected with another group of believers. They're going to care for your soul. And, and so we're a kingdom of priests, the scripture says. Yes. So I, I tell people all the time, man, listen, I may not be your pastor. Like, you know, like you think of me as your pastor. Like I'm going to be the guy that's there with you every day as, as Watermark has grown now to the tens of thousands that, that, you know, we, we tell folks, listen, I'm going to make sure you're pastored and shepherded mm-hmm. and I'm going to, I'm going to help you. I always call this the believer's progression. You go from being a dog yes. to use Philippians three language. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, to, a, to a sheep. Mm-hmm. Okay. To a shepherd. And, and by the way, even shepherds are still sheep. I mean, I get shepherded. And so I help people realize there's a, there's a transformation, something that Darwin could never prove that happened, that there was a yeah. jump in species. Jesus does that. Yeah. He takes from being this nuisance to being his people and then even allows us to shepherd others. So we equip them. We want them to be with a shepherd and to be cared for, and then we want to grow them so they can be that useful uh, person in God's mind. So we have, we, we, we have equipped disciple, which is kind of the nav material we use heavily, mm-hmm. um, because you yeah. want to teach others also so that they might teach as well. That's it. Disciple. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So it means mm-hmm. that 2 Timothy 2, 2 is everything. Yes, everything. These things you've heard from me teach to others who will then be faithful in the same way. And yeah. so, uh, I, I mean, if we're not producing disciples, that's how we measure our success. Right. Not by butts and seats, not by budgets, not by buildings, right? But by instead, uh, how are individuals doing it? Walking with Christ and then helping others know him. That's the way we measure success. So again, you have people involved in various groups and you have shepherds. And yep. so, and again, these are not staff people, right? That's Explain right. this again for some of our listeners are going, what? I mean, this just sounds very different than what a lot of churches are like, right? Yeah. It, well, I, I, and that's the problem. Yes. Okay. And that's why I wrote this book. I want to just say, Kirby, I wrote this book. So if you're somewhere where you aren't able to say to people, if you came to this community of faith of which I'm a part, your life, you would, you, you, you might reject Christ, but you're going to see him. Mm-hmm. You're going to see power. You're going to see transformations. You're going to see adult lives being changed. You're going to see marriages being healed. You're going to see children prospering. Okay. You're, you're gonna, and, and so if that's not happening where you are, right. Okay. Then I'm telling you, you're not running with Jesus. That that's, uh, you know, and especially here in, in, in our land, if you're in a, 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 a country where there's great oppression, where there's a lot of cultural embedding of uh, other religious beliefs and practices, you probably won't see quite as much fruit right away, mm-hmm. but they ought to see fruit in your life right away, and increasingly so. But if you're in a, a, an America in a Western context and you're not seeing God significantly throw off life transformation, and and by the way, I'm seeing it more by the way in, in Islamic countries today than I'm even in America, because when you believe there, you better really make sure you want to believe yeah. it, and that's why God There's goes a, to work. Yeah, cost the, of discipleship for sure. Yeah, the eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the earth, looking for those whose hearts are completely his, that he might strongly support them. And so I think a lot of churches, again, are just gatherings of people who call worship what they do for that hour and not what they do with their lives all week long. So, um, yeah, we are absolutely committed to helping every member be what the New Testament says every member should be, okay? A kingdom of priests. Yes. 
So uh, it's a blast. And people are first overwhelmed by it, and then they're like, I'll never stop doing this. What else would you want to do with your life? Well, again, if you're convicted by our conversation, you'll be convicted by this book, and I encourage you to get a copy. Come and see. We'll continue our conversation with Pastor Todd Wagner right after this. Now, back to Point of View, your listener-supported source for truth. In fact, once again, there is no way we can cover this entire book by Todd <laughs> Wagner. We knew that, yeah. but we wanted to cover a few pieces. One of those I mentioned just a minute ago was this idea of zero members. And yeah. I also like to get into peace fakers, breakers, and makers because wow. that's another question that churches always have. But what about this idea of zero members? What does that mean? Well, some people, you know, people always ask this, right? If you're yeah. in Texas, like, well, how big's your ranch? Which is a question you're never supposed to ask a rancher. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and we should never ask each each other how many members go to your church right but the right answer is if somebody asked me that is well what what month is it yeah because every january our membership goes to zero and the reason it does kirby is because very good we wanted to make sure mm -hmm. that we were all about what we said we're about and we all you know people don't do what you inspect I mean, you expect they do what you inspect. inspect and so we're at least you know god help us at least once a year doing a complete inventory and so every year in january every person who has been a part of our body and been shepherded here does a spiritual self-assessment and and they answer questions pertaining to each of those four categories their belief in christ and doctrine uh the way they belong to the body and practice one another's the way they've been trained and grown and do they use scripture to answer questions how they're growing in, in apologetic understanding and then just the way that they're living their life and being useful the hands and feet of christ be strong in ministry and so it's a spiritual self-assessment when they get done they hit send it goes into a a master database that I look at the macro data. I, I've never looked at anybody individual. Like, I wonder what Kirby said. But what you do, if you're a member of a community, is when you hit send, it goes into that macro data, but you also send it to the members of your community that you're living life with so that they can look over your answers so and they good. can say either, Kirby, you're, you're, you've been way too hard on yourself, man. You, you do a lot better than you. and yeah. Or they're like, Kirby, you're deluded. Yeah. Right. And that one time this entire year did I hear you reference scripture, right? That's something <laughs> they never say to you when you answered a question. Or you never witnessed anybody. Yeah. Like, yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. yeah. And so and it just helps us and just go and, and then we all try and grab one area that we have a spiritual a formation plan to grow in that one area in that next year. And then I look at the macro data that informs my preaching and informs the way we evaluate our ministries. So our membership every year goes to zero and we rebuild it. And then we also can find out who are the people that are struggling that right now don't even have the attention or the will to spend 20 to 30 minutes assessing their walk with Christ right. once a year. I don't know of any other church that does this. Maybe you do, but maybe you've spawned some I, since then. No, but I, I, I don't. I, I, I don't. I know some others maybe have asked us a lot about it, but I did. That was one of the interesting things that Ortberg, who wrote a, a nice little deal for me, said, how mm -hmm. many churches do you know where people get dismembered and remembered every, <laughs> every year? year? Only like Ortberg could say. <laughs> but but I, he, he, he said the same thing to me because I don't know anybody else that's doing that. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I don't want to waste their time or my time. And what we tell people, by the way, Kirby, every year is when some folks go, I'm not going to do that. OK, I go, listen, if you're if you're form adverse, this is not about filling out a form. Let's have a conversation, though. Mm -hmm. And if somebody won't have a conversation with you about their walk with Christ, what's that tell you about their, their love for Jesus? Well, and anybody else, <laughs> if they're in the military, they're yeah. in business or anywhere else in life. Yeah. Other than maybe in their family. But even there, if you go to a weekend to remember, you do a self-assessment. Right. But the one place where we don't is the most important place we are, and that is as fellow believers uh, together yes. as part of the Church of Jesus Christ. And it's why the church is not something worth coming and seeing. Because when you, you know, I think J.C. Ryle is the one that said the human heart is like a field. If you leave it unattended, it will grow weeds. Yes, of course. And so that's what that's what shepherds tend to people. Mm -hmm. And I and that's why I say we don't want people that attend to service, but that tend to God's business. That's what the church is. I'm not trying to amass a bunch of folks that come listen to me flat my jacks, you know, for an hour a week. I want I want people to go and be spurred on to follow Christ. And it's a blast. It's 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 the joy of my life. I never thought I'd say that. Well again, one of the individuals that has had such a profound impact on me is Todd Wagner. Mm -hmm. And I can remember, for example, mm -hmm. teaching about the Trinity with the chairs, for mm -hmm. example, and uh, some of the wags mm -hmm. uh, words from wags <laughs> and things of that. I mean then uh -huh. I come away and go, that is profound. Uh, and I'm going to use that, or I'm, yeah. and I give you credit and all the rest. That's but nice. you mentioned as well John Ortberg, but also Matt Chandler, yeah. Eric Metaxas, all sorts of people have been on this program have endorsed this mm -hmm. book. And I'm almost out of time, which is sad because we could go 
go for two hours. Maybe we'll do it again some other time. But uh, talk about how people can use this, because this is certainly yeah. an individual book where I can read through this. But I know, Todd, we have lots of pastors. We have yeah. seminary students and others that listen to this. We have Bible fellowship leaders, Sunday school leaders, small group leaders who could really take this and begin to maybe even have a curriculum or even have a preaching series that really says, wow. what is the church? And that's why you wrote that. It so is. that it would not only just transform individual lives, but whole communities, right? Yeah, that's my prayer. In fact, I had uh, uh, the guy who did the line edit for this book. This is a story I, I mentioned to you just briefly. I might, I might be good to share. It was a very humbling thing. He, he said, Todd, I've done this for 20 years, and only three of the times I've ever written an author when I was done doing the line edit. And he said, and those I did right after I got done reading their book. Yours I didn't respond to for two to three months. He goes, but I just asked Cook if I could call you. And I wanted to tell you, he said, I live here in this particular city with my wife and kids. I can do what I can do anywhere. And after reading that, we, we were thinking about picking up where we are and moving to Dallas so we can be a part of this community. Be a part of the church. And I said, don't do that. No. I said, the reason I wrote that book is so yeah. that you, you could have it to share with other friends. And, and you can do it in your community. And yes, yes. And just say, so that's how it can be used, yes. is, is to be able to sit and read and go, man, that is. It's a, like, I, I have a chapter in here called Change Your Campfire. Yes. Okay. Yes. And okay. that's a chapter about how, can you imagine walking with Jesus, Kirby? And every night when you sit around the campfire, you go, can you believe what happened today? Mm -hmm. Okay, what happened over there at Garrison? Can you believe when we went to Bethsaida what he did? How about when we were on that storm? Every day you'd have a different story of the power of God mm -hmm. showing up. And that's, I'm telling you, we Jesus says this amazing thing in John 14. These works that I have done, even greater works than these will you do. If you ask me, in effect, I will do it through you. And most people in churches don't have that experience. And so I want you to read this book. I want you to be encouraged by it. Read it with your friends. Ask yourself, is that biblical, right? Be yeah. a Berean, study it to yeah. see if it's so. Share it with your pastor and say, Pastor, let's stop doing weekly services for largely bored adults. Let's get after it. Can this be our story? And the answer is yes. This has nothing to do with Watermark. It's got everything to do with what God intends for his people. Again, chapter 17, changing uh, the campfire conversation. Yeah. Chapter 18, greater works. Chapter yeah. 19, the shipwreck mission. Wow. And then finally, go and be. Mm -hmm. And I would say, be real careful when you take this to the pastor because they're going to go, oh boy, here we go again. Yeah. You know, somebody going against me, but just saying, you know, can we really be what the church is supposed to be mm -hmm. in the 21st century? And this has the potential to really begin to change everything. And no. I love that story. Don't come to Dallas. No. Take this message to another part of the yes, world. Yes, be the church. And you're going to, you know, contextualize it. But but be committed to God's word. Believe, okay, Second Chronicles 16, 9, the eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the earth, again, that he might strongly support those whose hearts are completely his. I pray that God uses you to create a place that he would want anybody to come and see his power at work in your life. Well, again, we have a couple of links that I wanted to mention real quickly. Mm. Of course, they have the link to Watermark Community mm. Church. Yep. We have the link for the book, a Come mm. and See. You can get it on Kindle or in hardback. And we also have Words from Wags. And I would just know that if you even go to YouTube right now, type in Todd Wagner, mm. you'll be uh, absolutely addicted as I am, you know? I mean, I, I love really uh, TED Talks and I love Prager University uh -huh. and I love Todd Wagner and oh, wow. anything on video that you guys do. And mm -hmm. I'm just always appreciative of the fact that you're willing to take on some of these really tough issues and teach what is the whole counsel of God. That's right. I, and I would encourage pastors that your people are looking to you. They want to know, do we have answers yeah. to the questions that are out there? And the answer is yes. Yes, we do. Okay, God's word, when you teach the whole counsel of God's word and when you apply it, to people, they're going to go, this is a useful book to me. And if we've got a loving Heavenly Father, don't you think he'd want us to live wisely? And so, yeah, that real truth real quick is where we try in little, you know, seven to eight minute sound bites, take on those topics. And uh, I did it for my friends. So when they're getting beat up at work, well, like, well, you got a loving God. How come that thing in Newtown happened? Right. No, oh, your God's so loving. How's this happen to go? Hey, listen to this review these biblical truths, and get the conversation started. And so whether it be, uh, you know, we've done lighthearted stuff like should Christians wear yoga pants yeah. to, uh, <laughs> to to what's a biblical view on gun control. Yeah, to, that's your most to, recent. Yeah, yeah. To, to stuff. Uh, we just did a, a couple that are going to come out with Eric on the Reformation, so that'll be fun. That'll be really good. Todd Wagner's been in studio with us. If you want to know more, simply go to our website, wow. pointofview.net. Todd, let's do it again sometime. Thank you, Kirby. It's a privilege to be with you. I want to thank Andrew and Steve. We'll see you back here tomorrow for our weekend edition. We'll see you then.